Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spoiler Warning Podcast. This is review number 645 with our review of Parallel. I'm Christopher Schnazy. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spoiler Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week in the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest films coming to a streaming platform near you. Um, previously in the feed, we had a review of Wolfwalkers, which is a film you should definitely check out. And uh, here we're reviewing a film called Parallel, which uh, we'll get into in a little bit. Um, <laughs> but to start this episode off, um, I think when we watch films uh, together or apart, Stephen... Um, given the life that we lead and uh, the jobs that we both have. I think one of the really joys that we take away um, from the film going experience is watching the depiction of startup life and oh, yeah. what it's what it's like to be people who have an idea trying to make an app. <laughs> and so my question for you, Stephen, is what did you think of like forget the premise of parallel and this mirror? What did you think of uh, this parking app that these guys were making and uh, their idea um, to pitch this to a company? <laughs> I mean, it. Uh, frankly, I couldn't even tell. Like, they're supposed to be a startup, but it seems like they're a contracting company that just, like, had a contracting gig and they had, like, a mock-up. <laughs> There's a moment where they're giving the pitch. Like, like where two of the guys, there's clearly like the business guy and the tech guy and the business guy is giving his whole like top level vision and the tech guy is like, and it'll look like this. And he just like <laughs> swipes to like the clunkiest <laughs> screen and presses a button. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It, not I, I, totally I, I, thought out. I don't think. <laughs> I think the design for their parking app was made by the writer of the script. <laughs> Like he was right. Like yeah. he he drew it in. Like he he hand wrote the script and then drew it in the margins and they just took that image and digitized it and then used it in the film. Okay, as long as we're talking about the parking app, <laughs> if you had just made an app and you want to brag to someone about it, would you just throw a phone at them and drive away? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> like here's my IP. Keep it. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. How much money they made? Also. There's a point in this film where they brag about, so we'll get into it, but they have been using this mirror to supposedly grow their company exponentially. And like right. halfway through the movie, when they're throwing a party and opening champagne and like models are running around, they're like, oh my God, we're so big. One of the characters turns to the other guy and says, we're up to 43 million. <laughs> and I was <laughs> just like, I was like, huh. So... You have all the magic in the world with your fucking mirror world. And like 43 million is like the achievement that you've been fighting towards. It just seemed a little, yeah. it seemed a little crazy. Yeah. I remember 43 million. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the movie is definitely, this is not Silicon Valley. They do not get the numbers and the details quite right. It is definitely like, it, it feels like one of those depictions where, you know, people, everyone saw the social network and they saw the way it depicted, like, the Facebook house in Menlo Park or whatever, yeah. the way coders behave. And they were like, oh, I get how coders work. And then, like, that is all they took away. Like, they didn't need to research anything else because they're like, got it. House, pizza, guy is good at pitching stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Idea guy, designer, coder, and then the friend who always leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it was like what was their plan also that same scene where they're bragging about getting to 43 million they're still just four people there, there there's no scene like boy the room style where they have a floor of people on phones like doing crazy shit like supposedly they're getting all this crazy technology um that arguably is a little too future for the ideas that they're presenting in this film um arguably yeah yeah, and and they never get more employees. In fact, they lose one employee. <laughs> like, that's just it. Just yeah, doesn't... I don't know how their sales works because they still seem to be working with like contracting gigs, like getting NREs for every app that they build. So I don't, I don't know where the money's coming from. Um, I just the... know that they are wildly successful for reasons nobody really knows. <laughs> the the funny thing too is they could they could easily solve that problem with the script by having them not form a company but just a like a a, a group that they all are under and they would just steal technology patent it and then just like sell it to other companies and just take them like they don't do anything right. they're not a company that provides the technology they're just a company that patented the idea and then sells that off to other people who will do something with it like 
that, that would just explain away the fact that they never have more employees or more people or staff or production facilities or, or anything like that. But yeah, maybe they keep that all in the mirror world. We don't know. Man, if Sony had a mirror world, think about how many PS5s we could have extra instead of being all n- unable to get them now, Steven. Uh, that is so exciting. That's the first thing I would do. <laughs> but you know the PS5 game, then uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone would be starring in, like, what was it, Frankenstein together? So you'd never get to play your La La Land <laughs> game that you love so much. Yeah. So what do you say, Stephen, before we give too much away on our feelings of this film, what do you say we take a listen to the trailer and then come back and give all these fine listeners a review? To our new house. Well, I told you that house you guys are renting had bad energy. This is a fake. What? Come check this out. There's like a staircase back there. I'm pretty sure we lost our deposit. Whoa. Maybe someone lived up here like a squatter. Whoa. What the? What are you doing? No, wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Oh my god. I saw us. Saw us here with yes. you. I watched us for like 15 minutes. You were gone for like five seconds. Stop. One minute here equals three hours there. And each time you go through, it's like it resets the timeline. I think it's parallel universes. Holy f- This is the biggest unfair advantage in human history. Are we just steal other people's ideas? I found it in an alt this morning. Ah! Can I show you something? Things could get messy. No! Just because this is tragic doesn't mean we stop thinking. not himself he's breaking the rules we got to do something about it i got a storage unit full of stuff that'll set off revolutions we'll take a world by storm something's behind all this but we all know that you ain't that good he's a real person is he you've crossed a line we crossed the line All right, so that was the trailer for Parallel. It is a film which has, let's just say it, an amazing premise. Um, So basically, four friends uh, who are renting a house together, um, four friends living in a house together, and they basically discover a hidden room in their creepy-ass house. They go into that room and they find a mirror. That mirror happens to be a portal to parallel dimensions. And they just, they just decide to start experimenting with these portals to parallel dimensions and use them to advance their little company that they've created. And uh, things, as they always do when you fuck with the reality of the world, um, begin to slowly unravel. And uh, things might not work out so happy for everybody involved in this little game. So, Stephen Miller, what did you think of Parallel? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing, you don't need to be too sorry. Like, what, what do I think? Um, is it 1995 and I'm six years old at my friend's house watching, uh, like, the movie his mom just brought home? Because this is a goofy movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Yep. It is... I did not hate this movie. I think because, as you said, it is a great premise. The premise is great. The the elevator pitch is, like, awesome. No matter what, I'm going to have an okay time, even if it's just me closing my eyes and imagining what I would do with this premise, you know? Um, And that is pretty much all the movie had to offer. Like, this movie for sure is... It starts out promising... You know, the we were making fun of the startup 
depiction of startup life, but whatever, you know, it, it establishes the four main characters. They're going to have independent like character types and we're going to get to watch how that interacts with the new technology. It's fine. Who cares? It's fine. Um, the way it tries to shoehorn in Silicon Valley ideas, like d douchebag guy keeps talking about unfair advantages. It's like, okay, fine. Whatever you, you know, you watched a movie about startups. I get it. Like you're, you're using the lingo. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the the mirror, the parallel universes, what would you do with that? I thought that was a cool question. And I think for the most part, they established the rules in a way where you can do amazing things with it, but it doesn't completely break the space-time continuum. Like, they did the bare minimum of deciding the rules. Um, I immediately started ignoring the movie and imagining all the tricks you could do. Like you could go back to the same parallel universe over and over again. If you brought an alt into your universe as kind of like a <laughs> tether that you could bring back and forth with you. Like I was thinking all of that. How could I exploit this for you interesting? Know? Interesting. Very smart, Steven. That's where my head was at. Very, very smart. Uh, now the movie does not do anything this smart. Uh, the movie what starts as the kind of project almanac joy of like, what are we going to do with all this shit? And there is fun to be had here with what they do with all the shit. Uh, I don't know what is spoilers and what isn't. So I'm going to assume pretty much everything is spoilers and won't talk about it here, but they, there are some funny scenes involving what would you do if you suddenly had the power to do whatever you wanted? Yeah. I got a laugh. They were obvious, but I got a laugh just the same. Um, that joy wears off rather quickly and it becomes them exploring okay but seriously what could we do in a way that f felt wrong to me because like you're smart people you already know the ramifications of this you don't need to be having these conversations in your living room like a half hour later like you like it just felt like it was revealing things that anybody who has thought about this at all would within like five minutes of discovering the mirror be like, okay, wow. Okay. I get the ramifications of this. Um, like the movie was taking kind of too long doling those out. And yeah. then it just becomes a kind of dour fucking movie from there about like the dangers of be careful what you wish for. And, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And every other cliche in the book. And it just stops being fun. Like about halfway through this movie just stops being fun and it's never fun again. And I think that is the biggest crime in the movie. It's not the plot holes. It's not the fact that the mechanics like don't make any sense. If you really think about them too long, it isn't the fact that the characterizations are pretty weak. It's that this movie should, if nothing else, be only fun. It should just be dumb, silly fun and halfway through, it just stops being fun altogether. And that is the only reason I think this movie kind of blows. <laughs> like, otherwise, I think, like, the first half of this movie is actually totally a lot of fun. And whatever. It's not a good movie, but it... I don't know. I, I can't hate it too much. The more it tries to shoehorn things in later, um, like, there's a very, very, very shoehorned in Mandela Effect reference in this movie <laughs> that is like, yeah, the, the we worst get thing, it. We get what you're talking about. <laughs> the, the worst thing is just do the actual thing. Just have yeah, it just actually do the bears. be Bernstein it's Bears. <laughs> like, it doesn't need to be like the Chattanooga Cats or whatever they did instead. <laughs> like, just have it be the actual book. Jesus Christ. Like, if you're going to do it, everybody knows what you're actually doing. Just do the real thing because... That this will be the one time where it actually makes sense because you, it's not all of you collectively going like, yeah, wasn't it this? It's one character having it wrong. That that, that would be more interesting. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. So th as soon as it becomes serious, the movie loses me. But I still, maybe because it was short enough and it was the morning. I, don't know, I, didn't, I didn't hate you for me watching it. I was like, <laughs> okay. This is about what I thought I was signing up for when I was watching a movie called Parallel that came out <laughs> two years ago but didn't see the light of day until now. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for it. Uh, well, it didn't see the light of day because they have to keep doing all these things at night so they don't encounter themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is... Yeah, that doesn't stop them from yelling at the top of their lungs in the alt basement, like totally yeah. unafraid of anybody coming in. Also, it's, it's alt... So I think it's alt addicts. I think there's stairs that go up. Um, mm. but it could be up or down, but Steven, we've established on this podcast that, that, uh, you're not a fan of horror films, but from time to time, I do make you watch them and yeah. ans answer me this when there is a scary house, an old scary house, 
and there is something in the attic or the basement that is scary, how do the people not in those locations know those things are there? This feels like a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're not picking up where I'm going. Old houses creak. And when yep. four people are running around upstairs making a muck, you hear that and you go, huh, mm -hmm. why does it sound, even if they weren't yelling, you go, why does it uh, sound like there's uh, four people up there um, doing a thing? And then you yep. would go investigate and you would find out that there's this whole fucking, it's a mansion that it, it's, it's like an entire barn length of thing in a house that is a normal sized house. Um, so it definitely, right. definitely was a little weirded out by the, the, the depiction of like this entire thing existing. Or like and, nobody noticed that a, a major area of their like, like floor plan was missing. <laughs> like yeah, nobody yeah. ever thought like, wait a minute. I guess what? when they were... <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, the, the reason that didn't bother me much is there is a very common dream of the discovering the room in your house that you didn't know was there. Like, yeah, that's, like, Steven, up there it's with, a room. Like, you it's know, like, going to school without your pants on. <laughs> it, but, it, but it's like, what if there was a panic room in your house that you didn't know about? Not what if there was a thing bigger than your house in your house? That That's like some, mm -hmm. like, Dexter's laboratory shit. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, the thing that I... The point, the real point that I want to make here is I think your level of enjoyment with this film is directly proportionate or maybe parallel to your excitement going into the film because <laughs> you sure. you were like i know exactly what i'm getting and you walked oh, yeah. in <laughs> every year chris gets one movie that starts with a p that is a sci-fi movie <laughs> did you even watch a predestination though i didn't know <laughs> i guarantee you if you watch that it is higher concept than this and it's much better even though the production is worse um okay but uh, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, it's everywhere. Uh, but the, the thing that I'm trying to say is you were like, OK, whatever, I'll watch this film. And you're like, OK, I didn't hate the whole thing. I mostly had fun at the beginning. I told you I was going to whether or not we reviewed this, I was going to watch the shit out of it this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I did watch the shit out of it. But more, more, more accurately, it looked the shit out of me. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> <laughs> if that's the opposite of me watching the shit out of it. Um, this film, like, as as I believe you said earlier, I don't. I think we were already recording. Most of our conversation is going to have to take place in spoilers. Um, I did not prepare. I in my head, I was thinking. Remember back when we reviewed uh, the final um, Avengers film. And like when right. we went to spoilers, we just did like a, a, a beat by beat through the film. I was thinking mm -hmm. of reintroducing that and going beat by beat so we could talk about it. But I think You're I think the major me relive points... every beat of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some there are some fucking dumb decisions characters make that are that are mm -hmm. not just dumb in the moment for characters that like protest to be so smart. <laughs> like they're they make. Some of the stupidest the characters in this film make a specific decision which sets all of the bad things in this film in motion. And when you see it happening, you're like, I know that's stupid, but at least this is the outcome. And then it turns out that's not the outcome they were going for. <laughs> they, mm -hmm. There was something else. And we'll talk about that in spoilers. But th this film is just ridiculous. The dialogue is atrocious. There are so many scenes where it's like them, like the scene in the bar where they're just like quoting lines about technology back and forth to each other. And they're like, I got one. Let me say it right now. I was like, Jesus Christ. From the opening lines of oh, dialogue. There was a great line in that scene, though, <laughs> th through no benefit of the actual writer, but just from the timing that this movie came out which is one of the guys was talking to another one, like pepping him up. And he's like, did you hear that? That's the sound of another one of Elon Musk's rocket exploding, like talking about <laughs> how like you got to try hard. And like yeah, literally yeah. one of his rockets exploded like the day that I watched it or like a couple days earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so I, I think the writing in this film, like the dialogue writing in this film is, is horrible. Like it's just god awful the entire time. I think that at the beginning of, of, of the time when they first start trying to investigate what the mirror is and testing its, its, uh, its realities, I guess, I was actually kind of like, okay, cool. Now we're, 
you know, I can ignore all the crappy dialogue that I've seen up until this moment. At least now we're getting into the interesting part. Like, we're going to see how they experiment with the wall. I love that they, anytime I'm watching a film where something strange happens and people, it doesn't even have to be super scientific. Just as soon as they start, like, pulling out devices and, like, trying to record the difference between things or, like, sticking a camera in and, like, trying to see what's over there. Like, that stuff is cool because you're like, cool, you're doing something smart. You're experimenting. You're not just going to dive into this thing without knowing what the hell's on the other side. Like, like, seeing them play around is great. Then once they start venturing into the world and start testing the entire realities that they're seeing in there, I was like, oh, brilliant, interesting. This is cool. I'm, I'm liking this. Even though it's, like, little contrived explanations for the differences between the various realities, but they have to establish rules why they can't just play the lottery and become rich and all this kind of stuff. Um, Sure. Yeah. So I I was still kind of on board with that, but it's like when they make that first decision, that first real, real stupid decision, I was like, this is the worst (laughs) movie I've seen in a long time. It just became ridiculous. And it just compounds stupid decisions on top of stupid decisions. And then anytime they sprinkle in a very, very, creative decision um i think it's creative in one way and then i realized that the thing that makes it creative that allows them to comment on that reality is actually absent from what they're doing and they're just doing the simple version of what it looked like they were doing um once again spoilers you're gonna have to explain in spoilers (laughs) yeah yeah so this one in particular there was a decision made based on artwork Mm -hmm. and there was an assumption i made about whose artwork that was and I believe yeah. that assumption was wrong. I think it is, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in spoilers, but like that concept was very, very smart. Like the idea of if that person was who I thought it was at first, that's a really, really interesting concept to deal with. And it paints the realities of what they're trying to do and the moral gray area in a very, very different mm-hmm. light. But instead, it's just something that looked cool. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. okay, well, fuck this then. That doesn't make any sense. And there is like, and the, the reason why I, like, I was already like, oh, is that not what I think it is? And there's a scene later on where somebody's calling this character out on the thing that I now think it wasn't. And that would be the perfect moment for that character to make the argument that it was what I thought right. it was. But exactly, yeah. they don't, which means yep. that can't be the reality the then. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my God. So this film constantly does things that undercut what it does. And then on top of that, we we should just get into spoilers. There's too much stuff that like, I don't want to spoil too much. Okay. Let me see. Non-spoiler blitz things I can say. Um, uh, the competitor who's trying to code an app looks like bizarro Ryan Johnson. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, how do phones work in the alt world? I feel like they shouldn't. (laughs) Um, yeah, because oh, I well, feel like SIM cards st- have enough random something in the way it's encrypted that you couldn't just go into another universe and get Internet. But Stephen, uh, don't you know that uh, cell phones aren't a creative endeavor? <laughs> so oh, there's oh, not there you go. Yeah, there's sure. not random deviations in, in what they are made of. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. What, what else? What else would I want? Oh, the big note that I already mentioned to you. Uh, but I had more specific in the notes I took while watching the movie is that uh, uh, like carrying mice around will let you re-enter the same alt multiple times, which I think would be a clever, a clever way to like parachute into places that you want to go again or any animal would do. But I just want you to grab an animal that's small enough to keep in your pocket that like means you can like tether back and forth and have your own like secret universe that's all yours. So that's the thing though, is does it, does it have to be any matter from that dimension no, that can't be true because they they get a lot of matter from other dimensions. <laughs> and so right, it has yeah. to, so it has to be a living thing. My assumption is it's living creatures. That's my assumption. Yeah. Um, I guess they don't ever test it because we've never seen what happens when an alt goes back through. No, we have. It, we'll get it. We'll get into it. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. That, you just reminded me of something. <laughs> You reminded me of a you thing. You mean that... when this movie tries to be the prestige and realizes it doesn't know why it, or yeah. what it wants to say like, about it? <laughs> what are the chances that that scene could actually take place? And right. th- there are characters in that scene who knowingly recognize why the other person's there, but it is impossible. It is a statistical impo- like, impossibility. 
possibility for them to have arrived at that given moment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless, how long... Yeah, I wonder if there's like a cooldown period. <laughs> or if you, stay in, <laughs> if you stay in one dimension long enough, it breaks the connection. So now when you go in, it's you're like going into a period. different one. <laughs> I mean, these are important things. It's like, why did they not yeah. test this? We don't know. The mirror goes soft for like 10 to 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, but then you go to the periscope and then it's back. Yep, then you're fine. <laughs> Anyways, where were we, Stephen? I think we were probably winding towards a verdict so we could get into spoilers. I do just want to say, I said this off air already, but I watched uh, The Incident, the first movie by this director a few years back, at, like uh, the Roxy was showing it. And it, it was cool. Like, it, it's clear that this is a director that visual, the, this guy didn't write the movie. He only directed it. Seems like it was like yeah. a for hire gig. Uh, but worth checking out Isaac Esben's movies because I think he is probably much more creative than whatever the hell he had to do here. Yeah. And the the writer of this film, he's known for Parallel, and that is the only thing he's known for. <laughs> so Parallel, by the way, a movie which does not even have a Wikipedia entry, which kind of <laughs> blew my mind. <laughs> uh, I don't really know how you found it, to be honest. <laughs> it was it it was one of the things listed as like being released this week on VOD, um, and uh, just the poster alone and the word, I was like, I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> clearly this is going to be interdimensional uh, swapping of some sort. So I got to go check this out. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, I think it is probably quite a uh, time for us to get into spoilers. So for everybody who's not going to join us in spoilers, we're going to do a verdict for you. Stephen Miller, if you're going to even say must see, reckon with the caveat, wait for rental, pass with a caveat or a must avoid, what would you give it? Uh, pass with a caveat. I like. I didn't hate this movie. I again, I had enough fun with it. The characters were goofy. There's a scene involving money that I thought was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> there were some that... lines like somebody said, "You look like Hannibal Lecter trying to take a shit." That like made me chuckle a little bit. It's like it's very like B or C movie territory. But I was like, okay, okay. Again, I think it gets way too dour and up its own ass to its own detriment. It like if it could have kept a Project Almanac like joy the whole time, I would have been like, yeah, you know, B minus, cool. Uh, this isn't a B minus. This is worse than that, but it's fine. It, I didn't find it offensive in any way, and I think if you want to kill like an hour and a half, whatever, <laughs> you can watch this like little not great movie and think about the plot and you'll probably come up with more fun ideas in your head that will be entertaining to talk to with your friend on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so <laughs> uh, I think if you want to kill an hour and a half, you just go into the mirror for 30 seconds. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think if you want to kill an hour and a half, you better have another hour and a half to pull in and <laughs> drive to a uh, manic depressive state. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm going to give this film a must avoid. Um, I think, I think this film commits way too many sin. Like there are things that I think were fun about this film. I like the premise that money scene that you're talking about is probably the second best scene in this film. Um, mm -hmm. the first best scene of this film is, uh, a callback to a rule they establish about the mirror, <laughs> which I thought was pretty brilliant. Um, we'll talk about it in spoilers. Uh, but mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, for me, it's a must avoid just because um, there is just some stupid shit that we will talk about very shortly. And uh, for those who aren't going to join us very shortly, this will bring us to the end of the non-spoiler segment of the review. So, Stephen Miller, where do people find you if they would like to? Uh, 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 okay, uh, Alt Chris. <laughs> I know. Real Christopher would never have phrased it that way. Um, uh if people want to find me, if they would like to, they can go to uh, sdavidmiller.com or twitter.com slash sdavidmiller. 
People can find me at ChristopherInRealLife.com or Twitter.com slash ChristopherIRL. You can find the podcast over at TheSpoilerWarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you would like to subscribe to the show, you can do so on Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. Um, if you would like to know when the episodes go live, you can follow us at Twitter.com slash SpoilerWarning, Facebook.com slash TheSpoilerWarning, or Instagram.com slash TheSpoilerWarning. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at TheSpoilerWarning.com, or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will come from the soundtrack to Parallel, so hopefully you are enjoying that. Um, that music is playing right now. It's going to fade up. When the music fades out, we will be in full-blown spoiler territory, so watch out, um, because spoilers are going to be coming at you through the mirror where we found an abundant supply of spoilers to bring forth to you. <laughs> All right, Stephen, we are back. This is Spoiler Territory. It's the after part of our review of Parallel, where we are going to talk about full-blown spoilers for that film. Um, And there are going to be a lot of spoilers, because really, to talk about this film in any meaningful way, you have to talk about the ridiculous crap this film tries to pull. Um, Mm -hmm. So we can can bounce around a little bit, but but I want to talk, Stephen, about the first sin this film commits. Um, the first real sin, besides the dialogue at the beginning of the movie, um, is, you know, one of the guys begs his buddy, um, you know, to come help him get laid with the neighbor by yesterdaying her <laughs> or <laughs> right. Te- technically he wasn't yesterdaying her cause the band exists in that reality, but he was bringing an album that band did not release in her reality yeah. to woo her over. And he brings the guy over just to hang out until everyone's sufici- like sufficiently drunk and then sends him downstairs to wait just so he can conveniently be around to drag his shot body back <laughs> to the mirror. Mm-hmm. Because if he was just going to sure. go get laid on his own, he probably would have died there. Um, turns out that plan doesn't work anyways because he still dies. But here's the thing. They bring him back to the mirror. Everyone's freaking out. They tell the guy who's clearly unhinged now that... Hey, oh my God, he's dying. Call the ambulance. He goes, you know what? Maybe I don't call the ambulance because look, hear me out. How are we going to explain this? Okay, that's a typical, you know, not dealing with the situation correctly. But their genius plan is to ditch the dead body where the body should have died and swap their friend from that universe. And in my head, I'm like, This is stupid. Yes, you have your friend back. However, he's not really your friend. He's slightly different and he's going to be confused and he's not going to know what's going on. They go, no, 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 no. See, we'll tell him he was so drunk he didn't know he sold the company. We'll give him a stack of $10,000 and then we'll give him his dream job and send him away. So... And and he won't realize that we're multimillionaires, among other things that he won't realize. But see, see, we're we're not even. I'm not even complaining about that part yet. The thing I'm complaining about is, they could have just thrown the dead body into that other dimension. See, they're afraid of a missing person thing. I think they're yeah. afraid that if this guy suddenly disappears, it's going to come back to them. But. Does that person have family that anybody ever talks to? Does anybody know anything about him other than, hey, like he left and went and fucked off to some other... Like, they're worried about a missing person. But it's not like they're worried about their friend being gone and they want to have a copy back so he's still alive. They literally bring him just to send him away. They could have bought a company, made fake records of him being... Like, you know, if they're really making so much money, they could come up with any number of schemes to show that he went away. Here's the thing you could do. What if he stole some IP from you and ran away and then you use his credit card to make a bunch of purchases on your way to the airport and then say he flew to another Mm -hmm. company with your IP and then you can have this big thing where like, fuck this guy, he stole our shit just like that other guy that we don't like stole our shit. And like, it would be really easy to explain. Can I follow up on my mice plan and say what you really do here just (laughs) in terms of gaming out better than the movie? You have this mirror, you have time dilation, someone runs back in the mirror goes and finds a doctor. There should be plenty of time because of the time dilation. You bring the doctor back into this new universe. 
and then like y- the doctor and the dying guy go back through the mirror again and th- basically the guy can go to a hospital in the mirror universe and it's fine it'll never come back to them in any capacity and you could even have like paramedics and everybody ready and waiting because you have the time dilation on your side so you could like in an instant have everything you need to keep this guy alive but the problem that, that's what you should do so they go in and no matter how long it takes them to find a doctor they exit the second yeah i mean he was still pretty much just, he was gonna die like he was pretty much dead anyways at that point I mean, we don't know. I mean, if he was really pretty much dead, then, like, that is another dumb thing about the movie. If he was really about to die, then the guy not calling 911 wouldn't seem so evil, but they clearly want it to be evil. So you have to believe that he would have had a chance. And I feel like you could give him that chance by calling the hospital in Bizarro Universe instead. But anyway. <laughs> but, I mean, he what, when he goes, nah, I'm not going to call he basically takes his last breath at that same moment. So even if they called, he would still be trying to say like, hey, uh, never mind, he's dead. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, sorry, so it was another, a butt dial. This is, I would say, a storytelling sin that the movie commits with that sequence, which is there's a thing that happens where a movie will decide because something is different, even though the rules of the world are the same, we are going to make more extreme dramatic things happen just to prove to you uh, that there are new boundaries. Like, for instance, I think it was one of the X-Men prequels where a girl was, like, invincible or couldn't die. And the way they did that is multiple times she, like, falls and would have died, (laughs) which is not a thing that just happens every day in your life, like, when you're walking around normally. But just to showcase that they did it. In this case... I'm not saying it is impossible that this guy could hook up with a girl and then her boyfriend owns a gun and will come and shoot him. But I still think there is no reason that in Bizarro World that should happen. And yet in his lifestyle in regular world, he's not getting murdered every day. Like right away, I feel like they could have found a different reason for him to get hurt that wouldn't feel so contrived in the plot. It's a minor detail. I just feel like there's like there's no reason for it. I mean... He's he, he's been talking the whole movie about wanting to hook up with his neighbor and knowing that she has a boyfriend. So, like, really the difference is that he's an alcoholic who carries a gun versus he's just a dick who would punch him in the face. Not right. not even a dick. He's justified. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. So so the next the next thing I'm going to I want to talk about, which was going it was a thing that I've, I was teasing a lot in in the main review is this idea of where you t- like. So. The one rule that they establish is most things are relatively close. First of all, there's kind of a, a accidental dig on like journalism in this film <laughs> because they argue that creative endeavors are the widest variety of things. Um, but basically, the way they discover this is because every news article they, they read is just like a few of the words changed around, but it's the exact same story. <laughs> so it's kind of... Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it might be an accidental dig, but it's kind of like arguing that like there's no creative endeavor in journalism. Whatever, that's not my that's not my my main uh, upset thing. But the main upset thing is the designer of the group, who is herself uh, an artist, uh, but doesn't have the inspiration. When they're actually diving in to look at creative works in the world, she falls in love with this artwork from this other woman who is also blonde with a similar haircut um, assuming Mm -hmm. that was a self-portrait and she decides that like she's always wanted a a artist's career um, and decides to start like she has the she she obviously has the talent to paint all these things but she didn't have the inspiration to have painted them so she starts painting all of this stuff from somebody else now, as the scene was happening, I was interpreting that as she was stealing from herself in another timeline. Right. Like, like a different version of her didn't go into design, but went into classical art and made all these really awesome, beautiful paintings that like some of them reminded me of stuff from Buzzsaw, uh, where it's like super, super mm-hmm. rad, stylistic, kind of scary, but like really, really cool looking artwork. Um, and then one of them looks like a self-portrait of the artist who I thought stylistically looked like this this woman the 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 character we're talking about here and so i'm like oh that's very very interesting like one of the characters is going and stealing other people's things and she is simply absorbing a version she's reappropriating herself from another dimension 
into herself in this dimension. And I thought that was a really interesting idea about like, yes, you're not going in and taking like technically if you take somebody's IP and you recreate it in a different dimension, you're not really it, it as the one character states, it isn't really there's no victim to that crime because yeah. you now having that in this reality, unless somebody else was always going to go, always going to invent it, which they never sort of deal with. It's kind of a victimless crime. So the fact that she was doing it to herself was very, very interesting to me. And it avoided any of the complication of maybe that person just hasn't been discovered yet. Like if she was, you know, I re met, mentioned yesterday earlier, uh, the, in this episode, I mentioned the yep. film yesterday, <laughs> um, earlier in the episode. It's not like she is choosing something she thinks doesn't exist, putting it out in the world, and then there's any worry of that thing actually manifesting itself. It's, it's she is taking it from herself, who she is the only version of her who exists. So boom, here it is. Really great idea. But then we find out the more it goes on that, no, that's just a random artist who she stole shit from. And she is just taking it and doesn't seem to care, even though she wants to tell other people she cares about what they're doing. So I, it just, I found that frustrating because it was a really interesting gray area topic to discuss an idea that the film posed that it just decided to jettison in an obvious way that it could have kept in. And I, I don't know. I don't... Right. And I had the same thought and there are so many other things you could do to get the same point across. Like again, time runs differently in the alt universe. So, you know, uh, Palm Springs rules apply. Like she could, she could spend, you know, many many months studying art or getting inspiration yeah. or traveling or doing anything. Right? Like you could do that hack. Um, you could have her be like you said, stealing inspiration from herself. That would also be fine. Uh, I actually think, and the movie, I don't know if it supports it, but the sense I got is that one self portrait that you've you noticed is a real self portrait, and that is her realizing she's like a fraud because the one that she actually painted and came up with herself is the one that people don't care about at all. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I see and, that. That makes like, more sense. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that was my understanding of that. Um, I think though, the deeper problem that that example brings up, which I think is the biggest problem in the movie conceptually, not plot wise, plot wise, it's guy dying, other guy becoming evil and the whole thing just being like a death march to the finish. Um, but plot wise, it is, how different or similar are these alternate universes? Because, you know, butterfly theory applies. Every, everyone knows this. Tiny, minuscule changes can make big changes in real life. Yep. And yet, every time they go to this alternate dimension, these four people still live in that house. They're still building the parking app. They are still, everything is the same, you know, for every tangible reason, except oh, wildly different things like movies are different. And then we will learn later technology has been invented that has not been invented yet in this dimension. Yeah. Um, like the, the movie can't agree on, on what the rules are. And this is very clear early on when a character is experimenting. This is one of the times I thought was just really stupid. They want to see if they win the lottery. Of course you won't win the lottery. Like, it's a random number generator. Like, if anything in the world is going to be different, it is going to be, like, this random number that gets drawn. Um, but I, I just think the the inability to follow through on the butterfly effect or, like, when do major changes matter and when don't they matter is just, like, completely lost on the movie, and it makes everyone's plot to do everything just really, really futile and, like, not interesting anymore because the, the rules don't matter. They don't yeah. make any sense. But but I think, like, with, like... There's not enough, like, even though there there is time dilation happening, their events don't ripple. Like, we don't we don't spend time in those worlds, so we don't they don't see the the results of any action that they take. So to them, it doesn't actually matter. That's why the film isn't really concerned with it. But it's just, yeah, I I think I think for me the smartest thing that this film does, and the only thing that justifies the existence of this stupid group of people pretending to be a startup is the fact that the very first major thing they do is they spend five months building the app in two weeks <laughs> like that mm -hmm. that i think and 
I mean, it wasn't, I forget exactly how long it was, but basically, and yeah, like it was supposed to be like three weeks and they did it in like a day or something. And, yeah. yeah. And, and the one thing though, that is, that is silly. It like, it's stupid, but I kind of think it's fun. Um, it's the idea that rather than continually ordering food, they ordered 30 pizzas at once. And on an interval, they just bring the pizza in yep. to the portal because it's ready for them see like, i didn't even remember if they show that happening but in my head i was like oh that's how i would do it and that already like made me happy yeah like i thought i thought that was another brilliant thing that they, like that was genuinely funny like it's it's just a ridiculous idea that is sort of just kind of like i don't know it, it's, it's weird now the yeah, one I should make it clear when I talk about butterfly effect too I don't mean the impact that these people have in these alternate universes like that is okay because these universes are discardable I don't know if this is a multiverse theory and though they are just as real as this one I have no idea what this movie wants to do with that but like the universe is reset you never will get in the same universe a second time so that doesn't matter what I mean is kind of like a um looking in the past and thinking about the butterfly effect, a universe where a Hollywood movie was completely different or a thing was invented that hasn't oh, been yeah, invented yeah. yet. Like everything is different in that universe. If creative decisions are different, these four people will have never met. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, and, and that is what bothers me is the movie can't decide like how close or how different are these random multiverses that they're popping up in? And because of that, it just feels like it all falls apart to me. Well, well you're forgetting, Stephen, that finding the mirror and the decisions they make after the mirror are the first clever things they've ever done in their life. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's why they're basically the same up until that moment. <laughs> yep. Touche. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, um, the next thing that really really bugged me about this film is okay in every dimension it is still 2018 we'll call it 2020 but this film was made to be released in 2018 mm. apparently so we'll call it 2018 no matter how much advancement you do i feel like you don't arrive at like paper thin e-ink readers and laser guns and a device that instantly turns things from solid to liquid to gas without burning or melting or anything like that. Like there are things, there are future technologies that are like alien space technologies that they get just by stealing ideas from other companies. And, and that sort of, that sort of annoyed me. Also, I'm I'm looking at the poster right now, and he's holding his space gun in the poster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember what the time multiplier is? It's uh one. It's one hundred and eighty or something like that. It's basically one. Yeah, that, that, that's what I remembered too. Yeah, one minute is three hours. I was trying to think. You could imagine if the guy was just like gone for, you know, a year, or you know, a month or something and then came back with all this tech, it would make more sense, right? Because he's letting a lot of time pass and then he's bringing future tech into the present. Um, no, no, but it's backwards. And maybe... Huh? No, no. No, it's not. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. He, no, no. he could live... But Yeah, yeah, true, true. He could live... Well, he would age, though. That's the thing. It's not, a, it's not right. magic. <laughs> so... Well, that's why, again, uh, speak of magic... That could be where this like completely useless prestige plot of like the CEO having a bunch of alts basically and he's just swapping out or whatever and that is how he does so many things, which what is he doing? I don't even understand. Um but that could be the one argument is if he kept replacing himself with alts, then one of him could like go spelunking for, you know, the equivalent of years in alt universe and find a bunch of future technology and then bring it back. Yeah. I mean that would in theory, that would make some sense. But you're always, every time you go into one of these, you are starting from whatever the current time is you went back in time. Right. And you have to live there for that long. So he would have to, like, he would have had to wait until he could clone himself so that he could send the clone that looked like the age that he was when he first entered back in that thing. 
Maybe it's all clones. Mm. It, it just seems... No, right. Like, maybe he is just clones. But then that's what bothered me, too. Like, the thing that uh, the guy shoots, the version of him, and then another one of him steps out of the mirror, is the one that steps out of the mirror supposed to be the, quote, real one? Like, is that is that the belief... Or does it even matter? Because he clearly knows all about the mirror and the plan and all of their histories, and he doesn't seem confused at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, so that's the thing, is it very much feels like they are they are in cahoots in that moment, um, but it doesn't explain how he could have enter, exited through that mirror. That is the one thing that doesn't make sense. Because there's, there's nothing tying him to that space. Mm-hmm. Unless they are doing the mouse thing. <laughs> they have mice in their pockets. Yeah. yeah. True. Some, something to think about. Yeah, I think mice in the pockets <laughs> is the way to go. So I, I do want easy because you just have like you just have a pet mouse that you keep in that basement or attic. We you know, we disagree. I think it's a basement, you think it's an attic. Um see we're fighting. <laughs> I mean aren't aren't the basement and the attic just parallel parts of a home? <laughs> um, anyway you have a pet mouse and now for all time when you step in the mirror there's going to be a mouse in the mirror version too right like that you're keeping there well but maybe not because mirror them haven't ever discovered the mirror after a few days shouldn't mirror them have discovered the mirror like where does this forking where does the branching factor happen so the yeah so the yeah that's the other dumb thing is <laughs> nobody establishes why they're the only versions that have discovered the mirror um mm-hmm. apparently they're the only ones that had that fight at that exact place so that the one guy could say see that logo and then throw the picture basically uh shawshank redemption it <laughs> and discovered the hole yeah. into the hiding crawl space so one more good thing no sorry one more bad thing and then one good thing the bad thing, the thing that makes me the most mad, the most mad is the stinger of this film. Mm-hmm. There is... Everything we've learned is there is a mirror that has to be in an exact position in a certain spot. It's bolted to the ground. That's the only way you can travel. They smash the mirror. It doesn't exist. We have a character standing in front of a completely unrelated mirror in a bathroom hears the flash and comes out and doesn't recognize the songs that were playing right before she went into the bathroom. Clearly establishing that, I don't know, maybe one of the other clones of the other guy figured out how to travel without the mirrors. But if he did that, why was he continuing to use the mirror in the first place when he could have just been zapping anywhere he wanted to go? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I That was, I, was the implication that like she stepped out of the mirror in the bathroom like i i wasn't sure yeah yeah like like herself came out of like a a other reality version of herself i guess came out of the mirror um maybe if you have enough and and that's the stupid thing too is like it's it's on imdb right now there's this shot and it's like the endless mirrors like mirrors reflecting in mirrors maybe if you stand in front of enough reflections of a mirror you can summon it's like a Bloody Mary sort of situation. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> don't freak me out. <laughs> don't scare me. But I think you're a hypocrite because when the <laughs> did this, you ate it up <laughs> just because it didn't imply something about stepping out of mirrors. <laughs> I, I, I was actually, <clears throat> I didn't want to bring that film up because I don't want to give away anything related to that film, Stephen. But I was thinking if you did have this mirror, in a romantic context, like let's say you were on like a first date or some event that you wanted to make last longer. If you sure. went and swapped with each other. <laughs> That's the third date. <laughs> nice. But if you basically imagine this, two versions of yourself, you swap with the other partner and then you time dilate. So you spend this time in real time and then swap back to the reality with the swapped version and then spend another three hours. And then when you come back, you've all only spent one hour, one and a half hours. Right. Wait, I'm lost. (laughs) So, so you're going to spend time with your significant other. You pass through the mirror. 
and the, one of you passes yeah. through the mirror and the other one passes oh that's the other thing is you yeah you have to do this trade back and forth right so mm-hmm. partner a goes into partner b's world and partner b the partner a from world b goes in, into the thing right so now one of you is in real time while the other one is in 180 Near time time yeah and then when you swap back the other person goes through and now the first person is catching up to the extra time that was left over that they didn't ex- that they didn't experience because they were in the time dilated time <laughs> and <laughs> you see what i'm saying so am i hooking up with my alt or not <laughs> <laughs> This this is the worst build up to a porno ever. <laughs> uh, you get what I'm saying though? You're... I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me try this again. If you Am go... I trying to maximize time with my partner? Like yes. why don't we both just go in the mirror together? Because you're still when you exit you'll still be I don't know. <laughs> when we exit won't it still have only been like a minute? <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm trying to accomplish things in that world though right oh so it's not it's not just like go in there do something and come back it's you want to persist whatever you were doing in that time so imagine if like like say their exper- experiment where they went into the mirror world to build an app what if they halved it back and forth and then in both worlds they built that app you see what i'm saying yeah, but does that mean you believe that to mirror world, the regular world is 180 times faster also? <laughs> it should be. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. We don't know anything about how all it's experienced the real world. I mean, it should it should be, right? Like if somebody kind I don't of know. like in theory if they just sat in front of that mirror for as, as long as they were alive, eventually somebody could come out right right and then for that person when they went back in they would arrive at the same time that they were when they went in it should work the same way both directions Mm. (laughs) Uh, yeah i'm just skeptical that it does (laughs) (laughs) well the good news steven is that it doesn't work anyway because it's just not real um yep but i said i was going to transition into one good thing which I'll have to mention half a bad thing at first. I was really annoyed that the mirror is at like a 45 degree angle. And when they exit on the other side, it's not 45 degrees the other direction. <laughs> like, right? right? Like to me, it should be like a real portal where if you're angled upwards, it should be angled downward on the other side. That just makes sense to me mm-hmm. having played the game portal. Um, sure. So I, I wanted it to work the way it didn't. But the way they explain a way that away is that when the portal's down, it's open. When you put it upright... It is it is closed, which brings me to my favorite scene in the film, <laughs> which is our bad guy and his laser gun is going around trying to kill everybody and he tries to mm-hmm. escape and someone goes, we got to get the hell out of her. And she's like, no, he's going to come back. He's probably going to have a crazy gun or weapons or whatever. And she runs and does like a like a you know soccer style slide tackle yeah. to kick the door in or the mirror into position to lock it so that it's closed as the dude is stepping out of the yeah. mirror and then you get the equilibrium moment where he's like just <laughs> cut in half yeah how fucking cool is that it was and and as she was running towards it i was like yes she's going to she's going to cut him in half like i knew it was coming and i was like this is the greatest thing ever um and i really enjoyed that See, and it surprised me, too, because I thought what was going to happen is she was going to do, like, a running slide to shut it, and then someone was going to, like, throw something and shatter the mirror, and that, like, this was the two-step process that was going to happen, is now there's no portal, nobody can get in. I didn't know she was going to cut a dude in half. Yeah. So that was, that was cool. <laughs> oh. So, I mean, basically what I'm saying is great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic movie. Totally justifies why we spent... An hour reviewing this and 20 minutes reviewing Wolfwalkers, <laughs> a movie we both really enjoyed. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And any, any, any last things you would like to talk about, Stephen? I, I, um, okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. 
let's pretend you are this genius mastermind who can travel dimensions, steal technology, and do everything you want. If you were going to murder one of your friends and then body swap them and convince that swapped version that, like, bad guys were trying to, like, arrest you or something and you had to flee the country, and you were trying to dispose of evidence, would you ditch the body but keep the phone and then throw the phone away in the trash can in your kitchen? <laughs> Sure. Of course. <laughs> I just thought it was ridiculous. Well, what's especially hilarious is you have the perfect way of getting rid of any evidence, you know? Yeah. Like the mirror. Just throw like, it in the like, mirror. <laughs> and yeah, that's, it's that's, gone, the, that's the right? best part. Yeah. Is once you throw it into the mirror, you will never be able to get back to it again if you wanted it. So, yeah. It just seems... Also, holy shit. Fishing line. <laughs> So you just get a bunch of strings of fishing line and label it with each dimension and just leave them running mm. out of the mirror. And then you can always just like like a little Rolodex that's connected to these fishing lines and you just pull it through. Right? Can 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 it can can the the barrier be broken by two separate things going into two disparate I guess they impression. would they would all hold open the first one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, because if they're not... Mice mice is still the move. <laughs> Just get a mouse in every dimension and name, like, label it. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> that reminds me of... Uh, this is, now I'm just, like, talking about random shit now. <clears throat> but one of my favorite uh, stories from the Machine of Death series... Um, which is like a bunch of short stories about this world in which you can, um, you basically take a blood sample from a living creature and you get like a little card that explains how that thing is going to die. Um, mm -hmm. There was one story that somebody wrote where these scientists basically figured out a way to send messages back in time by they would get like like hundreds of rats and they would kill them in a certain sequence with uh with something that would be like a letter so that back in the, back in the present when they prick the like the rat and figure out how it's going to die it would spell out like mm -hmm. a message to them from the future where they were actually doing the killing of the thing it just it was an interesting idea to play around with an idea of this machine that could sample how you're going to die yep <laughs> and that's our show guys <laughs> <laughs> Yay! We solved it. We solved parallel. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're good done. night. Yeah, I think we're done. And good luck. <laughs>